Happy Saturday. Today we're going to tackle an extremely important issue, protecting yourself with contracts in Panama. When do you need one? What needs to be in it? How do you make sure it's airtight and you're protected if something goes wrong? We're gonna head over to my personal attorney, Maria Guerra's office in Coronado and talk to her all about contracts today. So if this is a type of topic you're interested in, make sure you click the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit notifications so you know when we post a new video every Saturday. Head on over to the I Go Panama Facebook group linked below. Over 25,000 people strong asking and answering questions about anything and everything Panama every day. And don't forget our igopanama.com website where we have articles, businesses you can trust, <laughs> which is really important about today's topic and more. All right, after the break, we're gonna go talk contracts. I am here with my wonderful attorney who has been working with me now for what, three months maybe? Yeah. About three, three months. months. She's now what I call a member of my team. And I'm telling you, if you need an attorney in Panama, this is the lady. This is Maria Guerra, and she has helped me with so many things in the last few months. And one of those things is contract law. I had a problem with the contract, we'll talk about it a little later on, that it looks like we're gonna to have to end up going to court over because it's too much money to walk away from. I want you to learn from Maria what you need to do to protect yourself, the things that I didn't do, so you never have to end up in court. So, and if you do, everything you have is solid and you're protected. So today we're gonna to be talking about contracts. Okay, Maria, so, how, who needs a contract? Like, what reasons would someone need to have a contract for here in Panama? Okay, um, normally you need contract for many different things. Um, for example, when you want to buy property or rent property, sell and rent, you need really to contract basic. When you open the business, when you want to finance, you need contract uh, when you're making a cross. You, know, you need contract um, for when you want to buy or rent vehicles. You need contract too. Uh, have many other options where you need contract when you employ the person for your business for working in your business. You really need to making a contract for this. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's see. So buying and selling real estate. Definitely, you need a contract. Renting, you need a contract. Don't just assume that the piece of paper they're handing you is a legal lease. And we actually have an article that Maria wrote all about rental scams and how you can protect yourself with contracts. And I'll link that article below. So if you're thinking about renting in Panama, you definitely want to check out that article. Um, and then if you are buying or selling a vehicle, if you're doing any financing, like personal loans, or you're, um, if you're loaning money to someone or you're borrowing from someone, you definitely want to have a contract in place. And then if you're hiring uh, any type of business for work, like for what I did, we're building a house. <laughs> and, and so um, having contracts in place for each of the different contractors that are doing things along the way, the guy that's building the house, the guy that's doing the electric, the, you know, different things. Make sure you have those contracts in place. And then like she said, the other one is labor law. Um, you know, I have two employees, Popsy and Timo at our property in Bocas, and we have to make sure that we have proper uh, legal contracts for their employment and that their seguro is getting paid and all of that. Because if you don't have all of this paperwork in place here in Panama, things can go sideways for you very quickly. And so we're gonna talk about how to prevent that. So the next topic is what kind of information, I mean, I know it's gonna be different if you have a vehicle or if it's real estate or if it's labor employees, 
But what general kinds of information should you make sure is always in a contract? Okay, um, the more important information you need to put is the name the owner. You need to check, remember I sent for you the link for you check who is the owner. The owner really sell for you the property or this is the owner rent property for you. You need to check unique uh, Finca number. You need to check in the Finca number the person is the owner. Um, the term condition. The basic term condition is what time you need to pay. Um, you have penalty you know pay. And um, who pay the mandates. You pay is included in the contract. Um, other situation is you need to go to the property and check in the water is okay. Mm -hmm. Because I have situation very funny like that. Um, what happened, the electricity is fine. You need to pass in your name the electricity. You need to government to make a new contract for you. You need to check in is included the contract. The internet is included. Um, um, everything very important. What happened in case you no pay? Where you go in case you no pay? Um, normally people don't enjoy to inscription the contract in the government. Mm -hmm. Because the government pay the deposit. Uh, okay, the deposit is only for something happens, something damaged in the property and have different rent contract. Half contract includes furniture and normally have the proper complete entry. Okay, you need when half furniture, you need, it's better you take the picture uh -huh. and you make in inventory for yeah. everything is in the house because when you go and you want to you, Close the, the, the contract, you need to check in everything because the owner can say for you, I give this contract for you and this is my inventory, mm -hmm. what happened with Where my is it? Right. this is damage, something, very, it's very important, more than have furniture. Do you recommend that people register their rental contracts with the government? I recommend it. You do? Completely. Okay. Because more in the interior, you see the people not register. It's short time, it's fine, mm -hmm. you know, but the law say you must register. Okay. Yes. All right. So basically for the rental contracts, you want to make sure you, that the owner is the owner. Um, because a lot of times, that's one of the scams here, someone is renting you a property that they're not the owner of. Okay, and so you give them the money and then all of a sudden the real owner shows up and says, get out. Uh, so you need to make sure that the owner is the owner and an attorney can look everything up in the register for you and make sure that everything matches on the contract, that the cedula number matches the, the actual person who owns that cedula so you have their real identification. Make sure you have and, and this is kind of common anywhere you might be, but a lot of times I know we get to a foreign country and we feel very overwhelmed and we're not sure what the process should be, so we just sign whatever is in front of us. But you really need to make sure that all of the terms are laid out. When do you pay? How much do you pay? What happens if you don't pay? Um, who do you pay? How do you pay? If there's furniture in the house, if there's not furniture in the house, is the water working? Is the electrical working? Do you have to put that in your name or is the owner paying for that and then you reimburse them? There's a lot to cover when you're dealing with these rental contracts. So, and then like we were talking about, you can also register these with the government. So it's a lot more official and more protection for you. Make sure you take pictures inside and out, especially if there's furniture and appliances in. Be your own best, I don't know what the word for that is, but advocate. advocate. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Be your own best advocate. Cover everything. You know, we, we have a saying, um, CYA, cover your ass. And that no. is for the owner. Oh, and the address for the owner, too. Make sure you have their address. So if you have to go back and find them, you know where they are. That's what we're having trouble with with my yeah. contract right now. The address that he put on the contract is not the correct address. Yeah. So trying to track him down is a problem. So you, any contract you do, be it for rentals or selling your house or 
the employee like we were talking about, or vehicles, or financing, whatever it might be, details, details, details. Because guess what? If it's not in the contract, it doesn't exist. Try going to court and telling them, oh, well, yeah, I know I signed this contract that said there was a refrigerator and a sofa and all the furniture, but it really wasn't in there. You signed a contract saying it was in there. So you have to, you have to take care of yourself and make sure that the contract matches what you're actually getting. And I know it's difficult, guys. Believe me, look, I just got screwed. So I understand it's difficult when everything is in Spanish, when you don't understand the process, you don't understand the legal system, you don't understand contracts, but contracts are contracts are contracts. No matter where you came from or where you are, all of the information needs to be in the contract. And that's why it's really important to make sure that you have an attorney that is double checking all of that stuff for you so you don't get stuck. Okay, what else do we have on our notes? Yes, um, I want uh, when you buy vehicles. Mm -hmm. Buy vehicles. Yes. yes, it's very important um, checking the number registration in the mm -hmm. government because I have um, process, current process where the people want put um, in the Facebook, they send in the vehicle, or they say other thing. When you go to pay, where? Oh. What happened? And sometimes no go to put. It's better you go to public area for looking mm -hmm. the car. No go very far away to the place. Try to close to good place, many people. Good lighting. Yes, yes. because mm -hmm. it's to be safe. Yes, yes. For safe. Yes. It's very important. It's very important. Yes, because look, guys, we all love the Panamanian people, and we know they're good people. But yes. just like everywhere. There's always a bad one, and <laughs> you don't want to be the one that gets stuck with the bad one. So when you're looking to buy a vehicle, you know, you've got to make sure all those numbers match up. Um, you can get contracts written up through your attorney, again, yeah. um, and, and just protect yourself. Especially, I mean, look, if you're going to, I joke with Maria sometimes and I say, from now on, I'm going to send my price mark <laughs> order to you <laughs> so you can make sure everything's good before I pay. Um, look, if you're spending a few hundred dollars on something, you know, you're probably not going to want to go to the expense of dealing with an attorney and everything. But when you're talking $1,000, $2,000, $10,000, $30,000, or a house for $300,000, Come on, we got. We all have to be smart, and we have to protect ourselves because you don't want to just hand that money off. Because Maria has lots of stories of clients who are out tens of thousands of dollars because they did not take the time to protect themselves in the beginning. So, I mean, I know that um, to look over a rental contract, you charge seventy five dollars. Yeah, yeah, seventy five dollars, yeah. and you're protected. Give me a break. If you can't afford the $75 to protect yourself, stay home wherever you are. Don't come to family. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. It's very crazy. Yes. It's very important because I have different story and dangerous story. And it's better you try to be safe. Try to be safe. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And checking the property and checking your broker because I have many brokers. No, it's broker. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because someone yes. says they're a real estate agent does not mean they're a real estate agent. They might show your ID, you're checking in the system, is real broker mm -hmm. or real estate agency. They must show for you when I have contract, they put for real estate, sign the contract, you must check in, really, they have power to determine from the owner for do this. Oh, because they keep good. the money and you never take the property. And so okay, that's very good advice. Um, what she's saying is, well, first of all, like I said, everyone here is a real estate agent. I can throw a rock out here in the Coronado Mall parking lot and hit a real estate agent because everyone thinks they're one. They're not. So real estate agents do have to be legally licensed in Panama. So do the agencies. So the company and the agent need to be licensed. And uh, your attorney can always look up and make sure. 
And what she's saying is that if you have a contract, a sales contract to purchase a home or to rent a home, um, and you're signing it with the agent without the owner being present, you better make sure that that agent has power of attorney to allow that owner, um, for them to sign for that owner that isn't there, okay? Because a real estate agent just can't sign a contract and say, okay, you sign, I sign, we're done, take your money and go, yeah. okay? You have to make sure that they have the legal right from the owner to sell that property. Or you can hand over thousands of dollars that poof, disappear. And good luck getting it back, especially if they're not licensed. This again is why you have to protect yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, is that all that we have on there? Yes. Okay. Uh, I remember when someone wants to finance your business, friend, family, make a contract. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Guys, who is the person who's least likely to ever pay you money back? Your brother, your sister, your child. Okay. So, <laughs> Those are the ones that are never going to pay you back. So if you want your money back, get a contract. Okay, Panama is not that much different from the United States, really, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Protect yourself. Be smart. Be your own best advocate. Thank you, Brian, for the word. Um, cross your T's and dot your I's. And yes, it's in a different language, but guess what? That's why we have translators. And there are official translators. Yes. Yes, yes that can, can actually translate documents officially because if you go to court and your signature is on a contract that's in Spanish and you get to court and you say, well, I didn't know what was in that. I don't speak Spanish. The judge is not going to care yes. because your signature is on it. It is your responsibility yes. to have that contract translated into English by an official translator not by Joe under the mango tree that, you know, speaks English and says, oh, yeah, everything's great here. You know, in the meantime, he's pocketing money from the other guy, you know, to tell you that. Yeah. Get an official translator. I think that the, the moral of this entire video is be smart. Be smart. It's all it is. Okay? Are there a lot of scams in Panama? Yeah. I hate to say it, but... Yeah, there are, with properties, with vehicles, with contractors, with almost everything. But if you're protecting yourself, you're getting good legal advice, you're making sure your contracts are solid, that's going to go a long way to protect you. Because generally, if you're dealing with someone who's trying to scam you, and you say, okay, I'm going to hand all of this to my attorney, and I'll get back to you tomorrow about it, yeah. that can solve all your problems right there. They don't want attorneys involved. And there's a reason for that, because they're trying to scam you, right? Do you have anything else to add, Maria? No. Try to check in everything proper. Try to take your translate. Your contract is cheap. It's very cheap. It's better you pay. Everything basic you need to know to understand proper the contract for later. You don't have problem. Yeah. We want to prevent problems. That's all we're doing here is preventing problems. So you can spend a little bit of money to prevent your problems that could cost you tens of thousands or more down the line. Thank you so much, Maria. It's so wonderful to have you as a part of my team. And I mean, she really is a part of me and Brian's team. She, uh, she has really helped me a lot these last three months. And I'm so pleased with the service that her and her husband, Ruhan, give to me. They're just, they're great people and they really want to help. It's a small firm. But, and, and you get very personalized service. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys know that I used to be with a very large uh, firm in Panama City who was great for me through my immigration and stuff. But when I start getting into big problems like with this contract, I need someone that I know is right there for me and is right there fighting for me. And that's what Maria has been for us. And we are forever grateful. Thank you. And hopefully we'll have a good outcome with this contract dispute that we're having now. And I'll come back and tell you how that whole process works. But I have to 
for now <laughs> until it's done. All right, well, thanks so much. If you enjoy content like this, make sure you click subscribe, uh, hit the notify bell, go to the I Go Panama Facebook group, and we will discuss this and anything else you want to talk about with Panama. And don't forget the igopanama.com website where you can find trusted, vetted businesses like Maria right there. Um, so you can find the people that you need that you can trust. All right, until next Saturday, have a great one. Bye.